This video is on natural selection. Do you understand the term ecological niche? Can you explain allopatric and sympatric speciation? Now for a species to survive and be successful, it will need to be very well adapted to its environment. Eventually it will find a particular role to play in its ecosystem and this is what we call its ecological niche. It should be specific to itself as otherwise it would be competing with other organisms and would they be therefore less likely to survive. There are three types of adaptations that will result in an organism developing a good niche. Anatomical, physiological and behavioural. So anatomical, now these are adaptations that involve the structure and form of an organism. For example, the large wingspan of the albatross allows it to stay in the air for several hours without flapping its wings. Physiological, now these are adaptations that involve the way the organism works. For example, it's biochemical pathways, enzymes and metabolism. For example, snakes make venom to protect themselves from predators and capture prey. It's a great adaptation, but can be costly for the snake to produce. And finally, behavioural. Now these are specific types of behaviour that make organisms better adapted to their surroundings and more likely to survive. For example, reptiles are cold-blooded, so they lie in the sun to warm up in order to be fast enough to catch their prey and escape predators. Other examples include mating rituals or using tools or migration or working in social groups. So those three categories there, anatomical, physiological and behavioural, go together to form the ecological niche of that organism. And that's how we look at the different adaptations that it has uh, for its environment. Now, sometimes conditions change and those adaptations may not be successful anymore. And we say that there is now a different selection pressure. Natural selection will continue and it may lead to the formation of an entirely new species. And that process is called speciation. Now for speciation to occur, two populations of a species need to be reproductively isolated. And this can happen in the following ways. Geographical isolation, temporal isolation, ecological isolation, mechanical isolation, and behavioral isolation. So geographical is when a physical barrier such as a river or mountain range separates certain individuals from the population. Temporal or seasonal, this is when certain species are only able to reproduce at certain times. And if this timing shifts and the group becomes isolated, uh, for example, this might be the time of year that a plant flowers. Ecological isolation, this is when individuals develop a preference for a particular part of the habitat and therefore don't mix anymore. Mechanical is when a mutation occurs that makes the animal's genitalia physically incompatible. Maybe they're different size or shape or location, or for example, uh, in flowers, it could be different flower structure may impede pollination. Behavioural is when mating rituals change or markings that show a potential mate could mutate. Now, if this happens, then there are two ways that the process of speciation occurs. Allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. Allopatric is the main way that evolution occurs. This is due to a geographical isolation. Sympatric occurs between populations of species living in the same place. So it's going to be one of those other ones, mechanical, ecological, behavioral, or temporal. So allopatric speciation. Now due to the different geographical locations, the two populations are under different selection pressures. The variation in each population allows for different adaptations to be selected depending on the different selection pressures. Certain alleles become more common in one, but not the other. They also experience different mutations. Therefore, over time, the populations evolve differently. An example are the two closely related species of antelope squirrel that live on opposite sides of the Grand Canyon. Harris's antelope squirrel is on the south rim, while the white-tailed antelope squirrel is on the north rim. Birds and other species that can cross the canyon have not diverged in this same way into two separate species. Allopatric speciation quite often leads to adaptive radiation. And this is when a new species arrives in a geographical uh, location and it disperses through the new area. There are plenty of ecological niches to fill and therefore the initial founder species gives rise to a whole host of new species. A good example of this was Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands. 
They all evolved from one species of finch that arrived on, at the islands uh, and each finch then specifically adapted its beak to uh, eat the type of food that was found on their island through natural selection. What about sympatric speciation? Sympatric speciation, as I've already mentioned, could be because of mechanical, ecological, behavioral or temporal isolation, but it's when organisms still occupy the same habitat. An example of this might be Lord Ho Island in the Tasmanian Sea, which is a tiny volcanic island. It's only 12 kilometers long and one kilometer wide. On the island, there are two species of palm tree within only a few meters of each other. But, so there's no physical barrier at all. But they use phylogenetics to show how both trees came from a shared ancestor, which separated after the formation of the island. The palms have different flowering time as their reproductive barrier. The soil type preferred by each palm is slightly different, and so the hypothesis is that each palm has evolved to flower at a different time due to this. So it's an example of sympatric speciation or sympatric, sympatric radiation.